Thanks for sitting down with us. So just before first is over, how's the uh, tour been going? Well, it's been going great. You know, we've been out for about six weeks. We're about halfway through. Uh, my girlfriend still hasn't broken up with me yet, and we haven't strangled the guys in Lamb of God. So things are pretty cool. It's difficult getting both of those bands onto one bill because uh, we both have gargantuan shows, but uh, uh, it's actually worked out really, really good. And uh, it, it took about the first month to get all the bugs worked out, but uh, things are rolling good now. And it's really cool to be here in Worcester on Halloween. We've never played here on Halloween before. This is a huge Guar town, and we've been doing great shows here for many years. But uh, to be able to give these people a, a Halloween show is totally awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. So um, uh, you've uh, been making a number of appearances on Fox News these past couple of months. Yeah, I know. And I'm as uh, surprised about it as anybody is. I mean, <laughs> I think Odorous deserves to be on there, but it's like, God, it, it only took 25 years. Um, <laughs> We just, you know, they just called us up out of nowhere. We were in in uh, New York doing the Fangoria convention. They were just like, "You want to? When's the next time you're in New York? You want to come by and do the show?" And I was like, "Well, I'm in New York right now." And I went over there and knocked it out, and just really hit it off with the people who do the show, and Greg in particular. And uh, you know, I've been uh, back on there like two I've been on, times, right? I've been on there ten times now. <laughs> Even I did the whole show one time. Uh, managed to like get into all kinds of shit with people, and all, there it's all over. Uh, YouTube, so right. you know it's definitely getting out there, and you know every time I do a do a segment, I'm, I'm pretty much sure they're never going to ask me back, but every time they do, so <laughs> pretty yeah. About the Dave Rocky experience, are we going to see another album from that? Yeah, I don't know. I really enjoy doing that band. You know, for some reason, I had this like. Desire, even though Guar like um, used to tour in an old school bus, I, I felt like I had to. I don't, I don't know why I felt this way. I felt like I had to go back and pay my dues by being in a band that was in a van for a while. I don't know <laughs> fucking why I did that, but and we had a lot of fun with it, and we put out some really good records, and we wrote some good music. I mean, the whole reason really that we did DBX is because I had. All, I mean, I tend to write songs like that. And I have no problem writing Guar lyrics, but I don't really write Guar metal all that great. So uh, the people that were in Guar at the time really weren't coming up with a lot of metal stuff. And what kind of was happening was a lot of my uh, goofy comedy material was becoming Guar songs. And I really didn't want it to be like that. So I kind of just took all my goofy stuff and just put it in another spot and let the metal just kind of take over Guar. And once I kind of got it out of my system, I was satisfied with that. But... You know, it's kind of like the ex-cops. When we were doing ex-cops, no one really seemed to care. But then, like, three or four years after we were done, people were like, oh, you got to do that again. Well, we'll probably never do the ex-cops again because, it, you know, I don't really want to do it unless I have the original lineup together. But with DBX, it's a lot easier. And just recently, Brad and Mike and I just did a, a couple of week, uh, weekends worth of DBX shows, and they, weren't, when they went really, really well. It was really fun. So, yeah, it's possible, but right now... Everything is so guar oriented, um, you know. This I'm going to be doing this for uh, for a while. Uh, well, at least until the end of this tour. And uh, but I would uh, I would think the next thing that would probably come out as far as like a side project is I've been wanting to do uh, the spoken turd project for a long time. <laughs> kind of like kind of like a spoken word album, but shittier. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll get I'll get there sooner or later, but for right now, Guar is fucking is taking over everything. Cool, cool. So, um, what is um, your or Odorous's like thirty minutes of preparation leading up to a show? What do you do to get yourself ready to go out there? Um, well, that's a you even need the thirty minutes, right? Okay, well, uh, you know, you got to lay out everything all day just to let it kind of dry out. Uh, let it let the uh, the, From the night before. Oh yeah, I mean it's like I come off stage, I'm I'm absolutely dripping, fucking soaking wet from head to toe, and the costume is soaked. Um, so it's and then it goes into a costume box and it drives around in the back of a fucking truck, and then it, you know it gets freezing cold, and finally you know you pull it out the next day, you sit it next to a heater all day, and about half an hour before the show, 
Uh, you start putting the shit on, and it basically, you just start from the bottom up. Uh, you paint on your six pack abs. <laughs> you give yourself the raccoon eyes and the, and the big black mouth, and then uh, you know you pour a fucking bottled water over your head and pull that shit together. Probably the, one of the weirdest things is uh, I wear uh, dishwashing gloves underneath the the rubber hands because. Uh, they used to stain my fin. I had to figure out a way to so my fingernails wouldn't get stained red. Because that was like really a pet peeve. I'd be like at a 7 Eleven in the middle of the night. And, uh, you know, I'd be, people would be looking at me like I was painting my toe, my, my fingernails or something. <laughs> I don't know why, like all the other stuff I do, which is so fucked up, like doesn't bug me. But, like, for some reason, having painted fingernails does. But, uh, so I put that on to keep the shit off my fingertips. And then, uh, then right before I hit the stage, I usually uh, we do our bat, what we call our battle juice, uh, either like a, a Jaeger bomb or maybe a shot of Crown. Uh, just enough, not enough to get loaded or anything, though. God knows I've done plenty of guar shows loaded, but uh, <laughs> that's more in the past. As I get older, I found myself actually wanting to perform very well, and and uh, and you know, the, as the music has gotten kind of better, you know, it's just got more metal, it's, it's, it takes a lot more to sing it, you know, and it's like, I can't be up there all fucked up, and uh, especially with all, a lot of the mock combat that we do, it's like, I can't be swinging, you know, big rubber swords at people's heads when I'm all loaded, <laughs> you know, like I did for like 20 years or so, um, yeah, I gave Matt, poor Matt McGuire at least eight concussions over the years, but, um, so yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it, just... Throw this shit on, paint on your six pack abs, do a shot of booze, and hit the stage. Yeah, so you guys have been around for 25 fucking years as of 2009, and we're wondering what are the best years for the metal scene out of those 25 years? For the, for the metal scene? Um, I have to say, at the very, very beginning of, uh, when, when hardcore was kind of getting shitty, I, I guess I'm talking about 83, 84, um, and Slayer and Metallica were just starting to get their shit out, and I started, you know, like, I used to be such, I grew up on metal, I was a complete metal head, but like, I was actually just, I graduated from high school in 1981, so I was still in high school when the Sex Pistols were around. <laughs> That's how fucking old I am. And, uh, you know, back then, it was inconceivable that your parents would be into the same kind of music that you would be. It, absolutely inconceivable. And uh, it was definitely re rebellion music. So I, when, I, when the Sex Pistols came out, when the Ramones came out, I just I got away from all my metal shit, all my Scorpions and Ted Nugent and all that crap. I was just listening to exclusively punk rock for a long time. But, like, when... I started hearing about this band Metallica, hearing about this band Slayer, and a lot of the other stuff, and then DRI did the crossover album and kind of got the thrash metal thing going, and I guess really probably the high point for me in metal was uh, when Rain and Blood came out, which I think is to this day the probably the best heavy metal album ever made. It, well, they made it's tied between Motorhead, No Sleep Till Hammersmith. And, uh, I mean, there's a lot of great metal out there, but right in that area right then when the hardcore scene was still going on really strongly and, and, uh, and the whole new kind of, like, you know, thrash metal, death metal, whatever you want to call it, the, the super double kick metal was just starting to happen. That was, that was pretty fucking awesome. Of course, it's pretty awesome now. I mean, there's, there's so many cool bands. But, you know, back in the day when Metallica and, uh, and Slayer... We're in their prime, and Guar had just put out Scum Dogs in the Universe. That was that was a pretty cool time for metal. Awesome. Yeah, we've been waiting waiting for somebody better to come along, you know? But it hasn't happened. Well, that'll be, never be anywhere better than <laughs> Guar, right? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, or Slayer, or Metallica, even though Metallica has done their best to destroy their careers, they, they won't. They can't. <laughs> They can, and since Slayer's been making the same album basically over and over again. And, you know, and then bands like Slipknot and Lordy have come along, but yeah, they, you know, they're just different. They're just like kitty versions of Guar, basically. No one's <laughs> taking what we've done uh, and really taking it to a next, the next level. There's things like Death Clock and the Gorillas and stuff that have worked in some kind of show, uh, theatrical elements to what they do. But no one's really, like, certainly no one's ever outgrossed us. No, and no one really has had the intellect or, or, or the balls to 
to work humor into it like we do. I mean, mm-hmm. there's not a lot of comedy metal out there. Death Clock is the coolest thing that's come along in a long, in a long time. And they're obviously not real because they're animated. At least we can put on rubber costumes and pretend we're from outer space. <laughs> 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 